Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that. With this screen recording program, you only get 15 minutes, and I could see the timer counting down and started to rush at the end. So as I mentioned, there's five things that we look for, and it tells us that we have uh, a chemical change. So sometimes it's easy to tell chemical change. We can see what's new. When I leave a, a nail out side and it's unprotected and it gets a lot it comes into contact with oxygen e either in the form of the oxygen in the air or oxygen in water I can see that it's rusted I can see that new thing that I have I can see the rust likewise when I put flour and baking soda and sugar and a bunch of other things together and I heat them up and that heat causes a chemical reaction to take place I can see that I have something new I can see that I have a cookie it looks different than when I started with just batter and I have something new. Now these things are very difficult to reverse. You can't unbake a cookie. You can't take the flour back out of a cookie. You can't take the yeast back out of a cookie. Those things are gone. They've actually changed into something new. Likewise, you cannot unburn a piece of a piece of paper. That paper has it's gone. It's changed into carbon dioxide, it's changed into water, it's changed into carbon monoxide, it's changed into smoke, it's changed into ashes. I cannot collect all those things and somehow put them back together and end up with a piece of paper again. So chemical changes are most of the time permanent, you cannot undo them. And as I said, we look for different clues. So those clues are, a new color. When I bake cookies, I get a new color. They turn gold or brown. That's a new color. Uh, heat and light given off. With cookies, no. Yes, I know the cookies are warmer, but they're not giving off heat because of the chemical reaction. They're warmer because I put them into a hot oven. Uh, if you've ever gone skiing and you take those hand warmer things, that's a chemical reaction. So you get this little bag of chemicals and the chemicals are apart from each other and you give it a squeeze and a shake and you mix it together you mix those chemicals inside together and they start to react with each other and that chemical reaction which you can't see inside the pouch but you know there's a chemical reaction because that hot pocket starts to give off heat that's the type of heat that I'm talking about uh, when you bake cookies bubbles you can actually see uh, that if the cookies become lighter and fluffier and there's lots of what looks like air holes in the cookies, that's where bubbles of gas used to be. So gas was created. And difficult to reverse. Uh, that's not really the clue. That's just a, a fact. The fifth clue, I don't know if I mentioned in the last video, is a new odor. So when you bake cookies, you definitely get a new odor. The, the batter didn't smell like that. But when you added in heat and you get started to get a chemical reaction and that cookie baked, you get a new odor. Uh, once again, think of a piece of wood burning. We know that a piece of wood burning is a chemical change. It's uh, combustion. New color? Absolutely. The wood turns black. And the heat and light given off? Absolutely. We can feel the heat from that fire. And the light given off from that fire, that's actually... Uh, it, that, that those flames and that heat is from the chemical reaction taking place and difficult to burn a reverse can you unbake a piece of or actually uh you, well you can't un uh, unburn a piece of wood but the fifth one as i mentioned is a new odor you can smell that fire so these are all clues that something new has happened and i guess you could put it in number six if you can actually see what the new thing is then you know uh, sometimes you can't always see what the new thing is. So when milk goes bad, when it sours, that's a chemical reaction. Uh, you might not notice new gas bubbles in it. You might not notice, and it's not giving off heat or light. You might not notice initially a new color, but you're going to notice a new odor. And so that tells us that milk going bad is a chemical reaction. All right. Or chemical change, sorry. And so just focus in on combustion. So combustion is a chemical reaction in which a fuel burns, or as we in chemistry would rather say, it reacts with oxygen. It's a very quick reaction. So the products are usually some sort of oxygen, 
or, or you get some sort of oxide and you get energy. So when that wood burns, what do you get? You get different oxides. You get water, and you can see H2O, o, uh, oxygen is part of water. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, both have O's in them. And you get energy, so you can get light energy, you get heat energy. Now, two different kinds of combustion we talked about. The first is complete. If there is enough oxygen, so that fire is in a, in the middle of a field or in the middle of a fire pit outside, you're getting enough oxygen. And so you're getting a really good burn. We call that complete uh, combustion. Oxygen is plentiful. And so what happens is the fuel, the piece of wood, and the oxygen, they react with each other. And we get carbon dioxide, which is CO2. We get water, which is H2O, and we get heat which and light, which is the energy. And over here, fuel, in this case, this is for methane, this is natural gas, this is what your furnace burns, or if you have a, uh, a gas stove like in the picture here, uh, CH4 is methane and oxygen. So in, in this case, if we're, we're burning these things and we have lots of air, so uh, think of your uh, a natural gas barbecue. Methane plus oxygen outside, and you're going to get carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that you get water from burning. If you've ever looked at a tailpipe at the back of your car, you'll see it's constantly, after the car starts running, it's constantly dripping water. And that's the, the uh, coming from mixing two of these H's from the gas and one of these O's from the, the oxygen. And so we get water. And a clean burn is good. Carbon dioxide, you and I are breathing that out right now, harmless. Uh, water, harmless. Heat and light, harmless. So a, a complete combustion is a good thing. The problem is, is if you don't get enough oxygen, you get what is called incomplete combustion. And if there's not enough oxygen, we have a problem. So here's the natural gas again. The methane here is the oxygen again if there's not enough oxygen like before with complete combustion we get carbon dioxide and water but we also get these two things here so co that's carbon monoxide you can see it's missing and carbon dioxide here has one carbon and two oxygens this only has one oxygen carbon monoxide is different it's a poisonous gas that kills you it gets into your body and it prevents your basically your, your, your lungs from taking in the oxygen that they need and carbon carbon is uh not harmful but it's dirty so coal is uh carbon in this case when you're burning something you get that in your fireplace you get that black layer of soot that's carbon a nice clean burn you get very little of that uh, so I, I know when I light a fire in my fireplace, when it's uh, just starting out, I get lots of carbon coating the inside of my fireplace, lots of that black soot. When the fire gets nice and hot and everything burns nice and clean, I don't get that. The problem with carbon monoxide is it's poisonous and it's odorless and so you can't smell it, you can't see it. And so in your house, if you have a, a problem with your furnace and you get incomplete combustion it starts to release carbon monoxide you don't know it's releasing carbon monoxide because it doesn't have a smell you can't see it and you breathe it in and basically what happens is you would uh, go unconscious and eventually die and unfortunately this happens far too often how can we prevent that one by never having a flame inside never bring a barbecue inside never bring uh, something that should be used outside where it needs lots of air uh, inside never bring your barbecue on a rainy day into your garage and try to or in the winter time and try to barbecue in there and of course carbon monoxide detectors they're kind of like smoke alarms you plug them in and if there's too much if there's carbon monoxide in the air these things will let you know you get out of the house you phone the fire department they will come and check it out for you and if they, they do determine that the, the levels are too high, they got some pretty sophisticated carbon monoxide detectors themselves that are handheld. 
Uh, they will phone the, the gas company, which is likely where the, the carbon monoxide is coming from, and the gas company will come in and fix that problem. So these are, this is the, uh, the issue with uh, incomplete combustion. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully that uh, gets us kind of caught up to where we were before March break. And we'll, uh, we'll pick up from here. So uh, no work associated with today's uh, lesson. Unless I decide to attach one of the worksheets that we've done. Might be a good idea just to go over them and, and uh, review that. And then uh, we'll get into some, some new concepts again. And we will uh, hopefully do a couple uh, labs online to uh, help you understand this material. Have a good one, everyone.